Welcome to my channel. This is Mario Lord, also known as Real Estate Guru PK. On this channel, we talk about my real estate endeavors. We also have the top real estate producers and the top entrepreneurs in the country. Be sure to click the link below with Justin P with his Support Black Colleges marketing course. Also with Jason White's Crack the Code affiliate link, click that below as well. Also to support the channel, Weeble and One Finance, Chase Discover Robinhood and Public a stock trading app. We hope you enjoyed this episode. This is Real Estate Guru PK signing up. How y'all doing? Welcome to another episode. I'm here with my man Al. Mm -hmm. Um, we connected like a month or two ago. Randomly too. Like. Yeah, yeah. We uh, who, who we connect through? Uh, Br. Br. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, it wasn't Bam. Uh, nah. I think it was Br. He BR? hit me. He was like, "Yo, my man want to do a podcast." Da da da. And I yeah. just reached out to you. Yes, the homie most definitely. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, let, let's go with your story. You from Detroit, right? Yeah, originally from Detroit. Uh, I've been a little bit everywhere though. I, I moved to Florida. Uh, I done been in New York. I done been in LA, Vegas. And I recently came to, well, it's been two years now. I've been in Texas for two years now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm a, I go a little bit everywhere. How you like how Houston been treating you? Honestly, Houston, probably the best city I done lived in. For real? Like, as soon as I came here, like I, I felt like the hospitality and that's what's really like, you know, made me like, nah, I'm gonna move out there. Like I just felt like the energy was different. Mm -hmm. and I, know, I don't know about for you, like, but for me, like you from here, right? Yeah, I'm from born and raised. Oh, okay, yeah. So you probably don't really feel it like how I feel. It. Nah, nah, I don't. I'm feel not like even how used to people feel. being friendly. Like I hear people at least speak to you. Like mm -hmm. growing up, we ain't really get that. So I just felt it like instantly. Mm -hmm. And then the housing market, a one out here. Like yeah, I was able to get way more house than I had in Vegas out here. More land, more everything. So it just made more sense to come out here financially. So you in Pearland, right? Yeah, yeah. Pearland. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we gotta um, take that out the interview though. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have people doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Um, so how'd you get started? Uh, honestly, I don't know. Like, I I always been an entrepreneur. I never had a job before, so mm -hmm. like, this just been something I've been doing like for my whole life. Just finding ways to make money, finding ways to buy some, flip it, and just you know keep going from there. And then over you know throughout the years, it just kind of grew to more to more clothing to you know real estate, just to invest and just you know a little bit of everything. I'm always open to learning, so. You know, I just kind of elevated throughout the years. Do you have any mentors? Nah, I need a mentor though. Oh, so you ain't got no mentor, no nobody mentor. to to confide in nothing. Nah, man. And, and I was always closed off to that, but like getting older, like I kind of opened myself up to that. So I go to Lighthouse Church, and my pastor, like you know, I feel like he's a perfect mentor to me. Like mm -hmm. you know, so me getting like a me, like I said, me getting older, like I kind of just been kind of more open to mentors, and I always hear like other people that are successful having mentors. So mm -hmm. like that really opened my mind up to really having a mentor. So yeah, that was, you know, that's something on my list to get. So what 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 do you like what's your expertise in? Like you, you like a jack of all trades. Like what? Yeah. Um <clears throat> a little bit of everything, man. Like right now I'm doing Airbnb and credit. I'm real heavy into that. But mm -hmm. I'm I never boxed myself into one thing. Like throughout the years, like I said, I just always kind of was into a little bit of everything. So now putting everything together, I'm like, you know, it seemed like I'm just like a jack of all trades because I just spent the time throughout the years just learning a little bit of everything. But my main focus now is Airbnb and credit. So if if somebody was trying to get started, how would you guide them into starting and in, in being an entrepreneur? Um, First, you got to be real with yourself. Everybody not built to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So you got to really be, ask yourself, is this what I want to do? Because entrepreneurship not not easy. A lot of people think they can just jump in it and just make some money, but you really can't. So you really just got to have that, you know, that drive and, you know, really be real with yourself and figure out if this really what you want to do. So yeah, that's, that's really the first step to me that I can tell somebody to, to take. So it's like a mindset thing? It's really a mindset thing. And, you know, that's really my main focus right now too, is mindset and really pushing the whole mindset concept of everything. So on my social media, I'm real big on mindset, like people getting their mindset right, because that's key. To whatever you're doing, like if your mind not right, it's just you know ain't nothing else gonna flow. So, yeah. How many mentees you you have? Uh, I wouldn't say I have any in particular mentees. Like I feel like all my followers is my mentees because mm -hmm. I'm always giving game. Like so, I wouldn't say that I got two or three mentees. So, yeah, I can't even really truthfully answer that question. But, so, yeah. so if you if you molded somebody into I guess following in your footsteps, how would you how would you go about it? If I molded somebody to follow in my footsteps, what you mean? Like, like to be, 
to be to make as much as money as you do a month? Mm. Honestly, I I never really. I don't know. I, I can't just come to somebody and be like, yeah, you can. I I never guarantee it. Like a lot of people online be like, yeah, you guaranteed to yeah, make this. Yeah, yeah. Nah, but you can't. Like, so I always tell people, like, you know, my journey may not be your journey. So I can't really push a certain, you know, visual on on things uh, to other people because that may not work for them. What work what work for me is for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so you gotta find out what's gonna work for you. So I can't necessarily just push a certain lifestyle on anybody or just a certain outlook or on life to anybody or just a certain journey on anybody because we all got different journeys. How your mom feel about like all the wealth that you built and everything you got going on? Man, my mom happy, man. Like when I first uh when I first started, because I, I went to school at one point. Uh, I went to college for a semester. And when I stopped going to school, like her main thing was you got to get a job, you got to do something, you got to get out there, you got to do something, right? So she didn't really know what I was going to do. I didn't really know what I was going to do. What year was this? This was uh, 2009. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I was still trying to figure it out. I Because I wanted to go to the NBA. I didn't know what I was oh, going to do. Oh, for real? Yeah, so once once life started drifting out of that direction, I just had to figure it out, man. That's why it led to me just kind of being involved with a little bit of everything because I was just trying to really figure it out. So, but yeah, overall, she happy, man. You know, the fact that she was able to see me really expand, really go against the grain and really beat the eyes and everything that we had to go through, you know, she happy. So like when when you was, you're like 6'5", right? Mm-hmm. So when when that wasn't an option anymore, like how'd you, how'd you get over like hoping to be in the, in the NBA? Uh, was you down for a while? Nah, you like- honestly, I wasn't really down, man. I'm the type of person I don't really let stuff get me down. Like I go with the flow of life. Mm. So if if something like, I notice something is like kind of steering me in another direction, I just kind of go with it. That's really how I ended up in Houston. Like I came out here for a funeral. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah, like and I just I just saw everything that was opening up for me out here. I'm like, nah, it's meant. I went to Vegas for a fight weekend and ended up moving out there. And that was one of the biggest times of my life. Like I made the most money, I met the most people. What, what fight was it? Floyd for Pacquiao. Oh, for real? Yeah, that, yeah. It was the first one or the uh, it was the first one, yep. Yeah, okay. yeah. So uh yeah, that's how I ended up out there, man. <laughs> never, hey, you know what's crazy? I see you interview you interview Matt, right? Yeah. Yo, I yeah, moved with Matt. Jay. Yeah. Also you were living with Matt. Yeah, yeah, I was living with Matt. What's crazy? Okay, so just to kind of go back on the story on that. <laughs> When I moved, like I said, I went for a fight weekend. Yeah, so I, yeah. I literally had to reset my life because I didn't know what direction I was going to go. Was you in LA with them too, or you? Yeah, yeah, I knew Matt in LA. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had a, I had a brand before I moved to, uh, to Vegas, but that brand ended up, you know, kind of, kind of plunging. So you know, I ended up going to Vegas. Matt was like, "Bro, you need to come out here, da da da." So I ended up going out there. Yo, I had to sleep on Matt's floor for like three months trying to figure <laughs> it out. But it was smooth. Though. I, I always respect Matt. I always had love for Matt. Um, but yeah, I knew Matt for a long time, just just to kind of tie that into you know you because I know you know Matt. Okay, both of y'all tall. Both of y'all like six five. Yeah, yeah, he a little bit shorter than me. Oh, you a little yeah, bit, a little bit short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so w- what play was you running in Vegas? In Ve- all right, so like I said, I was trying to figure it out when I first moved there. Mm. So I met my boy Wayne, right? Um, me, Wayne was familiar with me because I had a successful brand. He was familiar with me, but I didn't know him. So uh, me and him ended up meeting, and we started a backpack brand called More Vita, right? So um, we started that. We had our success with that. He an entrepreneur too, by the way. When I when I met him, he was an entrepreneur. So mm-hmm. he didn't believe me that you can start a brand with no money. So we started that brand literally with no money, right? So once he saw that that formula worked, he like, now nah, we got to do something else, right? So we ended up doing something else. We started a brand called Skywalkers, right? It was a technology company. We had the number one hoverboard company in the country. Mm. So you remember when the hoverboards was popping? Mm. Yeah, we had the number one hoverboard company in the in the uh, in the country, right? So we ended up starting a company with no boards. Once again, we started the same thing. So we sold one board, right? And we took that money from selling that one hoverboard and bought a boiler alert post, right? So boom, that boiler alert post bought us forty thousand the first day. Oh, for real? So that next, that was the first night. We went to sleep with 40000 in the account. So all the cash. Hey, all, all, in, the, all in the PayPal account. All y'all bands. money. Yeah. 40, 40K. <laughs> yep. So that next morning, we woke up. It was like 110, like 120. So we're like, nah, we got it. Keep in mind, we didn't have no product. So uh, we like, we got to figure it out. So we took some of that money. We started dumping it back into marketing. That 100-something turned to 300-something, 400. Like, next, you know, we looking at millions. It's like... 
that that was like like I said, that was the biggest time of my life because that that allowed me to open myself up even more as an entrepreneur because I was able to take that money, invest it in even more stuff, and it just kind of grew from there. So yeah. So who this pie that that y'all made that is who was all in this pie? Like y'all y'all split it up or whatever. All right, so it was me, my boy Wayne, mm-hmm. and my man's Jay Bling. I don't know if you ever heard of Jay Bling, but he you know he Floyd DJ. So okay. a lot of people know him. He got a big following. It was just us three making all that money and just trying to, you know, figure it out, man. <laughs> so, so yeah, we in, so after that, I started, well, we started another brand called uh, Retired Drug Dealer, right? Okay. So we started that company and like within maybe two to three weeks, Jay-Z wore it. So from there, we was in Forbes, we was in, we was on, uh, what was it? we was on E! News, uh, TMZ, everybody picked it up. Next to you know, Rick Ross ran it, Meat Mill ran it. So it, another company just flourished. We didn't have to force nothing. We didn't have to like go above and beyond mm-hmm. and do it. Like it just, everything just, I just went with the flow of everything and it just kind of gradually grew. So yeah, man, you know, that's just another so, who, piece of that Vegas story. Who was a retired drug dealer? None of us. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I, I didn't even like the brand, but it was something like this was around the time where everybody was like kind of making like a strip club veteran. Like everybody oh, had yeah. something going on with the, the with the military style. Mm. So we did the retired drug dealer and then boom, took off. So yeah. So so you so you ran those plays in Vegas. Mm-hmm. And then what what brought and then you said you, you went to Houston for a funeral. Yeah, yeah. So my uncle died. And so uh, hold on, why y'all? My bad. Why y'all split up? So y- y'all split up, right? No, no, no. We didn't split up. Uh, we still do business to this still day. Still do business. Yeah, that's that's my man. So every business opportunity I have, I always present it to him. Anything that's he got, dope. he always presented me. So we just kind of you know do everything together, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. And then um, you said you went to a funeral in Houston. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I I came down here for a funeral originally, and uh, and my aunt was telling me like, yeah, you need to like. Look at the houses out here. I didn't believe like how much the houses cost, how much house you can get, because I'm coming from Vegas. What, what, what year was this? This was this was two years ago. So this is probably like what was like 2019 ish. Yeah, like it was right before COVID. I moved out here. Okay. So yeah, so I came out here, and uh, once I saw the how much house and how much land you can get, I'm like, nah, I'm gonna stay here. Mm-hmm. I didn't even really know nobody other than family. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so being that everything that I do is pretty much internet based. Everything was able to still work for me moving forward, and you know I just been kind of growing since I've been here. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, so all all your family's in Philly. In where? In Philly. I mean, I'm <laughs> in, in Detroit. Detroit. My bad. No, no, no. I got a lot of. Oh, you got family, family in here. Philly too? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, most of my family here now. Like everybody that migrated out here now. So we we from all over the place, but everybody kind of made it. So your mom, your mom's came out. No, no, no. She ain't out. She's still in Florida, actually. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's. My pops, he still stay up north. He's still in Detroit right now. Uh, but yeah, like my aunts and uncles, they all out here. My cousins, they all out here. So, so what what plays you you running out here? Honestly, just the Airbnb and the credit play. Like you're that. not, not going to do any tour in the future. I do tour. I, oh, you do tour? I, I don't really, I don't really tell people that, but I, I do tours. But, uh, <laughs> it's like a behind the scenes game. Like, I, everybody's promoting tour, so I don't really kind of, you know, say okay, too I, much I about see it. What you're saying. Yeah, so that's a that's a business. Me and my little brother started, and we just kind of going from there. We only got seven cars in the fleet, so yeah, it ain't nothing too crazy. Okay, Matt got like thirty cars. I know. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a, at the end of next year. When all my inquiries hop off. I'm gonna hop on tour. Why? Why you waiting until next year for the inquiries? Uh, I, I don't. They might close on my accounts. Oh yeah, you got to do it for the accounts that you yeah, know, ain't yeah, to know of. yeah, yeah. I, I use all of them. All oh, of them man. went through. Yeah, yeah. So, well, I mean, you know how to get rid of that yeah. as soon as you get a. Yeah, pro, I do. You, I yeah. do. I do. I don't want. I don't want. I'm sure Br had to put you on something when it come to that, right? I see he be preaching the whole get the inquiries. Yeah, yeah. Years. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna do that because I know they're gonna start shutting down all my credit cards. Yeah. You know, I don't. I don't want to do that. Yeah, no, nah, I feel you. Nah, it ain't. It ain't even worth it. Um, I asked all my. Guess this, like you, you plan on having kids in the future, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Would you be mad if your kids um did didn't want to be entrepreneur and wanted wanted a nine to five? Nah, not at all. I'm I, I'm personally against the nine to five, but that's just me personally. Mm-hmm. But as far as my kids, that's what they want to do. Like I gotta give them the freedom to do that. Like, like if I they want to go to college, you'll be cool, hundred percent cool with it. Because I can't push my journey on them because mm-hmm. it may not work out for them. So yeah, I'm gonna still instill the whole, you know, go to school, get a job, whatever it is that they want to do. I'm gonna support that 100. Mm-hmm. percent So yeah, I, I can't be against that. Some parents be trying to force a certain out, outcome mm-hmm. on their uh, on their kids. Nah, I can't. Do that. I had a lot of kids. They like they don't have a choice. For real? A lot of them. 
Like, they don't have a choice. Nah, you know, because... I don't know. You know, they might not like Snoop son. Snoop, Snoop son was playing football all that time. Snoop mm-hmm. was pushing him to play football. And as soon as it was time to go to college or go to the league, he like, nah, I'm cool. Mm-hmm. So he really wasted all that time playing football. So, you know, that's just one example. Like Jordan's son trying to fill the shoes of Jordan and be a basketball player. He didn't he didn't make it. He didn't work out, yeah. So I, I can't push my kids to be like that. Mm-hmm. So what what what's next for you? Like what's where you see yourself in the next like five years? In the next five years, married, kids, probably retired. I want to put a system in place that uh, the way I don't really have to be as hands on. Like I'm a hands on guy, like so I like being completely hands on with whatever it is. But eventually, I want to you know step back and really enjoy my kids, really enjoy the family and stuff like that. So yeah, I want to. Right now, I'm just focused on being consistent with my content, consistently learning, elevating me as well as the people around me. Um, and really just kind of focusing in on this Airbnb thing. So our new project now is furnishing other people with Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. So I don't know nobody out here that's doing that. So anybody watching this, I was the first one doing the furnishing the Airbnb. Well, we was the first one doing the furnishing the Airbnb. So (laughs) where where you getting the furniture from? Uh, So we got different suppliers out here that we get the furniture from. So we always give our clients a certain budget. Mm -hmm. So you can start at 3,000 and keep going up depending on the size of the property. And, um, And yeah, so, you know, Within that three thousand dollars, we furnish the whole property. From there, we we teach them how to run it remotely because a lot of them don't. A lot of our clients don't live here, so you know we teach them how to run it from whatever city they in, and then yeah, you know that's a win win for whoever that is. You don't got to live here, and you can still you know make money from a whole another city. Mm-hmm. That's a win win right there. How much you charging for that? So our fee is twenty five hundred, and then we charging them three thousand, whatever the budget is that they you know that they choose. So like I said, that's depending on the size of the property. But yeah, so minimum of five thousand or twenty fifty five hundred around it. Five hundred. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. How much are they guaranteed to make, or are you not finna guarantee? Yeah, no, nah, you can't guarantee that. <laughs> but I mean, I can kind of guarantee because you know we got a we got other clients that actually you know get a bookings in you know twenty four to forty eight hours, and the, the bookings is for two three months at a time, so they made all their money back right up front, and now they get to either put that back into another property or pocket it however they want to do it. So. It's definitely profitable. I just don't guarantee a certain amount of profit. Are, are you like a numbers guy? Or are you are you like spontaneous? Or are you kind of both? Uh, kind of both. Kind of both. Yeah, yeah. Kind of both. You a numbers guy? Not really. I'm more. Um, I'm more spontaneous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if you think about it too much, you're not gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people talk themselves out of exactly. it. Exactly. After overthinking the whole process, nah, just go with the flow. Yeah, if the numbers work in my head real quick, then I'm just gonna do it. No, for sure. And that's how you got to be. Like, as yeah, an entrepreneur, yeah. you got to take them risks, man. Like, a lot of people be too scared to take a risk and boom, that's it. What would you, would you, if you could do it all over, would you still pursue basketball or would you just be an entrepreneur out, out of high school? Uh, Honestly, it's nothing about my journey that I would change. I can't say, oh, I, I wouldn't play basketball because you know, that still made me who I am. I still was, it still gave me a story to talk about. Like, if I went straight to my purpose, then I wouldn't really have too much to talk about other than success. So, being that I was able to go through all them challenges and go through all the obstacles, you know, to get to where I am today, I feel like that made me who I am. So, no, nah, I don't want to take nothing away. You want to change it? You want to change anything? Nothing. Nothing? Nah. Okay. Yeah. So, so. So you feel like the struggle is beneficial? Yeah, uh, for sure. Because it, it made me like really appreciate my current stage in life. So yeah, I, I definitely appreciate the struggle. Appreciate everything about the journey, man. That's To me, that's the best part, the journey. Mm-hmm. Like the money and the cars, the trip, all that's cool. But just that journey, man. Like all the stuff that we had to do to get to where we at and be able to brag about this, that, and the third to our kids. And mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's what really mattered to me, man. How many kids you plan on having? I only want two. Only want I, two? I want a girl and a boy, but you know I might not get that first try. So max three. three? If I don't get at least a girl and a boy and a three, and I'm done. Do you need a boy? I want a girl. Want I want a girl, girl first. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm. I'm gonna start doing this. Look. Look. Um. <laughs> <laughs> would you? What? What? What advice would you give to your daughter about me? Mm. What advice would I give my daughter about men? It's, it's so much. I don't know where to start. <laughs> I uh, I can't honestly. I can't even tell her like, cause the average answer gonna be, oh, don't trust men. Men ain't like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't say that because every every dude not a bad dude. So I can't really. I just want to instill like, like certain 
certain things that the average chick not thinking. I want to put that into it because I, I can't have my my daughter out here lost, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, looking for love and other dudes yeah. because I didn't give it to her. Like, there's so many things I want to put into my daughter, go against the grain and really put in her, like, you know, that a lot of other women can't say that they dad put into them. So, okay. What's like one thing for sure, like, she needs to know? Uh, <laughs> one thing she needs to know is what love is, like, how, what real love feels like. Um, you know, Growing up, I wasn't really showing that much affection. So me as an adult, like I had to really learn like what it is to love somebody or what it is to receive love. Cause a lot of people don't know how to receive it either. So, you know, I just want my my daughter to at least be able to receive the love and really understand what it is. That's nice, real, real nice, mm -hmm. real nice. Um, how was like your upbringing a little, just a little bit like in D in Detroit? Um, Detroit is Detroit, man. You know, shootouts. I'm, I can't say I was in no shootouts, but that's just, you know, the environment that you come in, you know, mm -hmm. drugs everywhere. Like, you know, just Detroit is like every other hood, you know what I'm saying? Like, but one thing about me, I never gravitated to that hood, you know, that hood mentality, that hood life. So, you know, I can't really say I, I was really affected by the streets, but I didn't see everything that come with, you know, mm -hmm. being involved in the streets. So, yeah, man, you know, <laughs> Detroit is Detroit. Yeah. Detroit Detroit? Yeah. Okay. Was your mom trying to like, like shield you from all that? Uh, no, nah, not really, man. Honestly, I used to be in trouble a lot. I got oh, in trouble real? a lot, so Me I was too. on punishment a lot. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, like, I had to sneak to go outside or do whatever, have my fun in school or do whatever like that. But I can't really say she tried to shield me from it because I really shielded myself from it from mm -hmm. just being in trouble like that. So yeah, your brothers was like y'all was like helping each other out with with everything. Uh. Honestly, I'm like the I'm like the the mentor of all my siblings. Oh, for real? Yeah. So they always look up to me to for the guidance and you know the certain answers. So I always wanted to make sure I was a perfect representation uh, for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I don't want them to go down a, down the wrong path. So like, they never heard me curse. They never see me drinking or doing whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I don't want them to you know pick up on them habits or do that just because I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. So. Me knowing that influence I got on them and the people around me, I try to, you know, shield certain things about. So you was like a father figure to all your siblings? Sure. Naturally, I'm I'm a I'm a father figure. She, you know, she tell you that I'm too much of a father figure. <laughs> that's just who I am naturally. I like, you know, uplifting those around me and just kind of protecting those around me. Just being like, not purposely, but you know, being a father figure, like you say. Yeah. That's dope. Um what 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 do you uh what do you plan on getting into like in Houston like like that what 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 made Houston like a stable for you like to be here like like you gotta be here yeah so Houston I notice a lot of people support each other especially black people and you know being that I'm black you know I'm a businessman eventually I know that there's some kind of business that I'm gonna be able to present to you know those in Houston mm. I don't want to force nothing I don't want to do none of that but eventually I know that it's gonna come. So being that I see the support out here, I'm gonna just go with the flow and allow that, you know, the, the aspect of my life to come. Yeah. You plan on like run like you plan on running it up like as far as the rental properties in Houston, like acquiring more more land and more properties? Uh that's more like my little brother lane. But eventually, you know, I might learn a little more about the real estate and, you know, kind of get a little deeper into it. Okay. Yeah. I'm not closed off to nothing. So any opportunity that, you know, I can elevate in, boom, I'm there. You get some housing in South Park Sunny so What's that at? That's like, um, it's real close to Pearland. It's like, you go down 288 mm -hmm. to the right, this airport, Reed Road, Belfort. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's South Park, Sunnyside. That's where I'm buying, that's where I'm buying most of my rental properties at. Uh, how's that going for you? It's going great. Mm -hmm. So with the property values just low over there and you able to, you know, do fix and flips or like, what exactly you do? I'm buying and holding. You can buy properties for like, Eight like seventy to a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and then the ARVs are like one eighty to two hundred thousand. Yeah, that's dope. But you know, like I said, I I'm not really too into it, so I can't really. Be, oh, nah, I need to get into it. <laughs> I'm not gonna force myself into it. So yeah. I feel that. But no, nah, for sure, when I when I get when I get more involved, I'm definitely gonna reach out to you, man. Okay, that's cool. Nah, Y'all, sure. I'm I'm here. Um, any courses you want to promote? Anything? Um, Instagram, um, TikTok. I'm gonna promote my Instagram for sure because that's where all the knowledge is at. My Instagram is Al Madden, A L M A D D I N. Um, like I said, we got the Airbnb play going on where we furnishing other people's Airbnbs and you know getting them started. A lot of people, everybody's not a businessman or a businesswoman, so 
we putting this into place for y'all that may not be a businessman or businesswoman and just kind of letting y'all go from there, teaching y'all how to actually make money from your cell phone. So, you know, yeah, tap in with that. Like I said, my Instagram is Al Madden, A-L-M-A-D-D-I-N. Um, you got TikTok, Twitter, anything else? Yeah, everything is Al Madden. So Madden. my man, I'm on, I'm the only one with this name, so I'm able to get that same name on everything. Al Madden, A-L-M-A-D-D-I-N. Okay. Man, appreciate you, man. Oh, for sure. Hey, I appreciate you. you for having me, man. Yeah, for sure.